This video is brought to you by iQuiltStudio.com and it's a video about several important points that we all run into with embroidery. One being centering, two being fixing loops, um, embroidering on terry cloth towels, and a few other little tips that I'll be covering. Um, when I embroider on terry cloth towels, I use stitch and tear for the stabilizer on the bottom. And um, I use violene instead of solvi for the top. Violene is usually used for freestanding lace. And you usually have to order it online. It's really hard to find. But it's it's water soluble but it's so soft and pliable and it never dries out like the Solvi does so this violin goes on the top and that smashes down the loops and everything so that your embroidery is pretty so those are the two um, other items you know the extra items that we use and then um, what I do is I'm going to embroider this number one, and I'm going to be embroidering number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five on five different little hand towels. So I'm going to be doing this five times, so I'm going to kind of make a system. So I start out and I printed out my template of my number one. I only need the number one because all the numbers are the same size. And um, so I cut it out and I made sure I left the lines on the top. And then you could see you have your crosshairs also. I don't know if you can see that. But um, so I take my towel and I see where approximately I want the number one. And I usually you put it like one inch above the ribbon. So that's like two fingers. So. I'm going to put it like right there. So any embroidery you get, you kind of like want to have one inch above the ribbon. You don't want to put it below the ribbon. So now I see that's basically where I want it. But now to make it more exact, I take my June Taylor Get Squared Ruler and I have several sizes of these. This is a small design and this design fits inside this hole. And that's what I want. So I take my June Taylor square, and if you notice on the square, um, the center of this square is right here in the center, obviously. But it's where the three is, because this is a six and a half inch square. So my crosshairs are right where this three is, and this three is. And then the vertical crosshair is this three, and then that three. Don't pay attention to this tape yet because it's really not supposed to be there yet. So anyway, so those are my crosshairs on here, the threes, vertical three and horizontal three. So I take those vertical crosshairs and I line them up with the vertical crosshairs on my template. And I just kind of approximate and I say, okay. That's about where I want my, that's about right where the center is. Right here, across this one, and across that one. All my crosshairs line up. So then I look down here by the ribbon and see which line I want to use to make this quick every time I do it. So this black line right here, Let's see if you can see it. Okay. This black line lines up with the top of this ribbon. Kind of. And I can move it down and, you know, just so that it does. So, if this black line didn't line up, say it would have been a different, say it was this black line, then I'd move this up. You know, say my say my one was way up here, then 
I'd have to get my crosshairs, you know. So then it would be this line. But my one is going to be down a little farther. So my one is going to be right about there. So in that position, with everything lining up, this is the line I want to use. That's why I put the tape there. Because now I can remember, oh, I'm using the top of this line with the top of this ribbon. So once this is done, I don't need to use this anymore. I can just toss it aside. And the only other thing I have to do now with every tile is find my vertical center. And we do that just by... Um, folding the towel. So this is all set. I'm using this line for that for that um, dimension. To find the center, then we just fold our towel in half vertically. Take a pin. Place a pin in. Dog Sparky. Gotta make this quick. Whoops. It's okay. That's the center. So now I know where my vertical center is. So now that I have my vertical center, I line that vertical center up with this three because this three here is in the center. So that's lined up, and this line is lined up with the ribbon. And that's it. Then after that, I just take my three and a half inch square, because it fits perfectly inside my six and a half inch June Taylor's ruler. It doesn't wiggle around or anything. And I line it up with the threes. I draw a crosshair. And then I draw another cross here. So, draw the horizontal cross here. And this is a water soluble pen. And then the vertical cross here. And then that's it. Then after that, I take my, my template. This is the template for my small hoop, and as you can see, it, let's see if I get this in straight, it clicks in there and it fits in there perfectly. So this is what I use then. I take this and I tape it. This crosshair matches up with this crosshair, so I don't need that anymore. I just put that on the crosshairs, and then I take some tape, but I make sure that I even though this is blue painter's tape, I take some old towel. This is just an old junky terry cloth towel, and I tape it, and then I lift it off. And then I do it again. Because I don't want it to be too, too sticky. And then now I can tape this. I'll just tape it on the top and on the bottom. This hoop, I'm just using the same hoop over and over because this is stitch and tear stabilizer. And um, when I did the first number one on the first tile, I just pulled the stitch and tear away and there was a hole here. I don't know if you could see. There's like, there was a hole there and then I just cut out another square 
sprayed temporary stabilizer on this new square and and I'm ready to go again. I don't have to rehoop the stabilizer. And I'll show you that after I do this number three because I have to do number three, number four, and number five so you'll see the process. But when I fir very first did it, I sprayed this um, hole inside with temporary basting spray. And then, um, but now after the fact, I just have to spray this little square that I stick on the back. So, um, so now it's hooped, and um, and this is stuck to there. And I just pick it up so that you know I have a hold of these two little. There's little holes that line up with these holes here. And I just make sure that I have a good grip on those. And I just bring it over. And this template, you know, fits in perfectly. And so, you really don't have to wiggle it or do much. It just fits perfectly. And then I press down so that it sticks to the basting spray. And I sprayed it very lightly. Because like I said, I don't want to rip these. And then I just pull it out, the template, with my fingers pressing down. And it barely, you know, it's barely has any stickiness on the tape, so it's fine. And so, I forgot to take the pin out. Let's do that. So that should be good. And it's stuck down pretty good. And that's it. So now it'll just, oh, that's not it. This is the violin. Some people use um, Solvi. But I, I can't seem to store my Solvi. It always dries out and gets crinkly. And I don't know. I just don't want to chance it. Vylene is used for stand, freestanding lace. It washes out just like Solvi. And I think it's better because it's nice and soft. And um, so I put the shiny side down. Not sure if I'm supposed to do that. And I did have some... Tape. This tape is barely, barely stuck. I did the same thing with this tape. You know, I stuck it to the the um, the old terry cloth. So there's like, and I guess I could put some more on the ends. Um, I mean, on the other sides. See, but that's too sticky, so that kind of scares me. So I'm gonna try to get some of the stickiness off. And this, this is, you know, cheap painters tape from Mark, so you never know what you're gonna get. So you gotta be careful. You know, it's not supposed to be sticky, but a lot of times it is. <laughs> Okay, so that's good. That'll be fine. And I'll just put it in the hoop and stitch. Okay, I'm going to um, got it in there. And I'm going to trace. Okay, the tape's not working. Okay, so we're going to do the number three. I got something stuck on my needle.
guess I could have taped it better. Oh well. tension kind of a little higher. It's on four and a half. I usually do it on like four. But I mean it's not too bad. So the violin will make it so it, you know, the terry doesn't, um, you know, drown out the number. stitches to tie off quite a bit. So then when you come around to the back you do have to be careful when you take this off. Um, you know you want to make sure that you're um, that your teary is not going to come off. And a lot of times what I can do is you can take, you know, your fingernail or something. Whoops. Oh, oh well, it punched through. But you can kind of get it started. I'm just being really, really careful. So I do not want to rip any of the terry. And it's really not. I mean, I sprayed it really lightly with the basting spray, so it's not really sticking like this here a little bit. I'm using the, the wooden thing because it's gentle. So it's fine, it's not sticking too much. So now I'll rip it like that and I mean if this were my towel, you know, I wouldn't be so careful, I would just probably rip it right off, but you never know. And um, it's caught there. Things happen. That's my new website, or my new YouTube channel. Shit happens for embroidery. And sewing in general. Okay, so then now I'll just kind of rip it to go. And to go into there, I use the stick first. I really shouldn't be using this. It's not very, I should use something with a rounder end. But, oh well. And just kind of go around. I 
I read one tutorial that said to use um, stitch and tear light. This is not stitch and tear light. So, and that's it's going to be a strong hole, that's for sure, but um, and I could leave that because then when I wash it, it's, it's not going to be sticky because you know how you see them in the stores, they still have it on there, you know, and then it'll be, it'll just come right off, so I should probably just do that. I think we will. We'll just leave that. And then a lot of times what I do with the with the tie-off thread and let's see if I can zoom in on this. Okay. This is just something that I I do as I'm OCD. Um I'll take one of these needles that they're called easy threading Let's see focus easy threading needles and they have a hole in the top they have a hole right in the top and so when you want to bury threads they make things easy so let's see if I could keep this in the camera view um, so this little thread here, there's a white one too, the bobbin thread, the both of them. So I'll first take my needle and right where the knot is, I'll go in, you know, in like a quarter inch through the stitching. And I'll bring the needle like all the way to the end. Okay, so now the needle is to the end, and I honestly don't know if you could see this or not. And then I take my tweezers, and you don't have to do this, nobody else does it. And I take the thread, and I take my finger and push to, to get the needle head to come up. And I popped it in there. I popped it right through the top of that needle. And then I take the white one, the bobbin thread. Do the same thing if I can see. And you can kind of hear it click in. So they're both in there. And then I pull it through. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. And that one did. It, it pulled it right through. So, and then, even though I don't have to do this, and these are washcloths, I put a tiny, tiniest little dot of fray check where that knot was. Like so tiny that nobody would ever know it's there. Except me. And that's it. And then I just put this on my needle and stuff. And so all this wash is off. And I don't know why I always cut it. I don't have to, but so I'll probably cut the fabric. Um and so then that's done. So we've got one, two, and three are done. So there's three. Whoops. Three is done. And it's pretty straight. So, um, I mean, I guess I could zoom out so you could see it better. So, so then what you're left with, this is what I was saying before, you're left with your hoop with a hole in it and it's fine because all you have to do is just cut a, another square out of the stitch and tear. So, 
That's what I'll do here. So I got another square cut. I'm going to spray this in my bathroom. I have a box. And I put this in the box and spray lightly. Then I'll bring it back and place it. Jeez. I'm sure to make it small. But that's okay. It's fine. So I'm going to go do that. So I sprayed this on this side. Flip it over because the hoop is turned over, obviously. And And then right away flip it over so it kind of smashes down. And then, you know, it's all sticky on top. So, and you don't have to worry, you don't have to ruin your hoop as much because when you spray your hoop, I have stuff that I stick, you know, like I'll stick, um, you know, strips of, of, well, I'm, I'm using like old stabilizer, like I put a strip here, one here, one here, and one there, and then I spray to try to save my hoop from having to clean it. So this one's ready now. It's got the spray on it, and it's ready for the next number. So then we just start all over again. So I cut some violin. I kind of just but here's my tent. This tent, they're all the same size, so, you know, probably doesn't even need to be that big, but that's fine. So that'll be my violin. And, um, and have everything ready here that over there, my old towel, and I just start all over, and then I got two more towels, so, um, just put that there, so then I find my center, straight and so like I said I already did all this stuff and I know exactly where to put this I don't even need this so I'm lining this green mark up with the top of this ribbon and the three with the pin Flatten that down, get the four and a half inch, I should move this down a little. Or three and a half inch. Put it right in the center where the three and the three are and it doesn't move because it fits exactly in there. to the right because of the thickness of the fabric and the thickness of the pen. And then just bring it down to the other three. Which is 
is not even sticky anymore. So, well, actually, I can just move it up. So then I put this arrow to arrow, tape it down, get my hoop ready. I'm on number four. I have to remember to change my. So I've got my thumbs on the two little holes here. Oops, you can't see really what I'm doing. Okay, so I got my thumbs on these two little holes. I'm kind of holding it taut. And it'll just fit right in the hole. Perfectly. I always kind of feel for for it anyways, even though I know I don't have to. Press down so it sticks real good. And then there's a little hole here you could stick your finger in and then put your fingers in there to hold it in place as you pull it off. kind of pressing it down. Okay, so I'm going to change it to four and um, okay. So, and I always almost forget to put the violin on. Way is the shiny side? Shiny side goes down, I think. I think so because when you you can see the needle penetrations want to go that way down. So let me take these. I didn't do a real good job the last time, so but I always worry about the velcro, not the velcro, the terry. These aren't even sticky anymore. careful but you know that's when the accidents happen when you just think everything's okay okay so now it's ready so we'll stitch out the four okay so speaking of how shit happens I got a loop I don't know if you can see it it's right here See that one thread right there, and um, so I'm going to show you how I do that. It's basically the same. Well, no, it's a little bit different. So, um, okay, so I get some thread from my long arm, or my long arm, my embroidery machine. The same uh, color as the number four there. And my scissors. With this, I I don't use the um, the easy threader needle. I use a a needle that kind of has a larger head, so I could pop that through. And you know, it has to be a closed head, basically. So. I thread a needle 
with the same blue thread um, so as you could see here I don't knot it or anything I might have to zoom out a little and I take the needle and I go through the loop and it's, I still have it in the hoop and this, so this is hard to do I might have to take it out of the hoop so let's do that first because I'm going to catch the, the terry cloth otherwise so okay so see I sprayed so lightly nothing is sticking and I, I'll I'll put the other stuff on when I'm done. See, I'm getting braver now because I'm getting more familiar with the prop, with the fabric and and whatnot. You know, you just don't know. You never know. Because it's it's different if you're doing you know a hundred shirts and. You know, you've done the same type of shirt from the same company over and over, and I don't know. Okay. So that's off. So let's get rid of the hoop, and I'll do the, um, the knotting and everything. So, um, so I want to get rid of this loop. So I take it and I feed it through but I pull out one end and then the end I pulled out I put aside but the other end I stick right back in again and that's why these embroidery needles are good because they have a long head so now when I pull it through so then I take my needle and I go in one of the edges just choose one that looks like it won't show go right exactly where that thread came out and it should go in easy because there's already a hole there so it should just pull through See, I didn't have to knot anything, and the loop is gone. So then on the other side, I have, I pulled my needle out, and I have two pieces of string. I can just knot them if I want. You know, I could, I could, uh, at this point, if I want, I could take my other needle since it's, they're easier to thread. This one would have been just as easy, but I can um, bury these threads. I could take the needle, the easy threader needle, stick it through, making sure not to go through to the other side. Push it almost all the way in. You don't have to at this point because these threads are so long. I could have kept it up higher. And um, 
stick them in. I was going to try to do them at the same time, but that's too hard. Would have been just as easy to thread the other one, but actually it would have been easier because now I don't have the tweezers and there. So I pulled them both through and then I'll pull my needle through. So I have it through and even if it comes apart now it's no big deal because I have the loops on the other side. So there, they're pulled through. And they're done. And I can, while I have this one in my hand, I can bury this beginning knot, although, let's see, where did this thing end? It ended here. So I do want to put a, a dot there. Okay, yeah, that's where I want to put it. So there's two threads here. The bobbin is white and the blue. Stick this easy threader in about a quarter of an inch. Get my tweezers. It's actually just really easy when they're when you use your tweezer and it's short like this. So it just snaps right in because you have all that tension so they both just snapped right in they didn't totally go through but I got the ends of it here there so that ain't going nowhere and I can even cut those so nobody ever catches them or anything these last words. Okay, so then I'll just dab that ever, ever so slightly on the tip here. Where they went in. I can even dab it there if I want. And that's it. So we got number four done. These scissors are not good anymore. They only work when you use them down here. They don't work up here. I have to adjust them or tighten them. Or I don't know. They might be bent. Okay. So that's it. So then we just start all over. There's our number four. Oops, there's our number four. And we got one more of these, and then I gotta do five more big towels with three inch letters. So we just start all over again and do number five.